All right. Today joining me on Catholic Views is Deacon Thane Barnier and his wife, Joanne. Um, we're going to talk about life as a deacon, still a fairly new deacon, but life as a deacon and a deacon's wife and um, what all happens, what a deacon does, because I've worked at the diocese now for a little over a year and I don't know everything a deacon does. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one. So welcome, you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. So I want to start with if you would give me a little background about you guys, your family, where are you from, all that kind of stuff. Well, uh, I'm originally from uh, Montana, Western Montana, oh. Missoula is where I grew up, and Joanne's from Rapid City. And uh, we met uh, in college at the University of Montana, actually. Okay. Uh, we were both uh, theater majors, believe it or not. Uh, we Our first meeting was 70 feet up in the air on a lighting grid. <laughs> so. Uh, there's nowhere to go but down from there. But, uh, <laughs> Is that uh, true, Joanne? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've been married uh, 26 years uh, this last July. Okay. Um, no kids of our own. Okay. We have 24 nieces and nephews. Oh, my goodness. Um, and uh, we we give uh, the love that we would have to give our children, we, we give to them. They're really our, our surrogate kids and... Uh, we're very, very close with uh, with all of them. Yep. Um, they bring a lot of joy to our lives. Yep. I bet uh, you are their favorite aunt and uncle. We certainly try. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. My husband and I don't have any kids either, so we have lots of nieces and nephews, and yeah, they get they get Christmas presents and birthday presents, and so yeah, all that good stuff that we probably wouldn't have done if we had had kids. Maybe. Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, and you know, and. And, and this is this, again. This is part of God's plan. You know, we we weren't really sure why we weren't able mm -hmm. to have kids, and this is something that you know we struggled with for a lot of years. Sure. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we we just kind of went, okay, uh, God's got a plan for us. And uh, uh, seven years ago, I guess, um, it started to really make sense. My my brother passed away in a car accident. Oh left behind a, a wife who was four months pregnant and five other little kids under the age oh, wow. of, of 10. Mm -hmm. So we were able to step in and, and, and help them get through that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we wouldn't have been able to, to give that kind of time if we'd had kids of our own. Right. And then moving into the diaconate, you know, um, if we had kids of our own, that would be, it'd be difficult. It's very tough for, for the, the, most of the permanent deacons are older because mm -hmm. of that. Because it's tough to, to raise a family and have uh, you know keep a marriage going and your ministry at the same time. Right. So um, you know this is just part of the plan that God had uh, in store for us, leading us to here. Right. Right. So um, I understand, Thane, that you are a convert. I am. Uh, are you a cradle Catholic? Yes. I okay. I thought so. I couldn't remember, Joanne. So um, how did you become Catholic, Deacon <clears throat> Thane? Well, <laughs> was that before or after you were married? It was well after. Okay. Um, but let me start by saying I swore I would never be Catholic. <laughs> um, We've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I grew up in a very strong Christian household. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were, I grew up Baptist. Um, I call it laid back Baptist because it wasn't, you know, there wasn't any of the anti Catholic sentiment right. or any of that. Um, I swore I'd never be Catholic because I had some bad experiences. With Catholics, sure. not the church, but Catholics. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we first decided we were going to get married, we uh, we tried to get some help to to you know get married in the Catholic Church, and we uh, we actually got pushback from uh, the priest huh. out in in Missoula. Now I know how wrong that was. Right. At, you know, absolutely the opposite response of what we yes. want. But at the time, uh, you know, it really just was like slamming a door in my face. Mm -hmm. um, and so we got married in the Baptist church, not really knowing, you know, how big a problem this really was. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I had kind of sucked Joanne into the Baptist church. You know, my mother's <laughs> uh, uh, faith, I always say, is like gravity. She just draws people in. <laughs> um, and Joe, like, like I'd say, like most young people, you know, wasn't really had a really, really solid grounding in her faith right. at that point. Uh, so when we moved out here, and, you know, for the next, you know, five, six, seven years, everybody was pushing me to become Catholic. And, and what happens when you push somebody? 
uh, they back away That's usually. Right. That's <laughs> they right. say, no, thank you. <laughs> the more they pushed, the more adamant it was, I will never be Catholic. Mm-hmm. So we moved out here. Um, I worked, moved out to work for Gateway. And, um, you know, we didn't have a church that we were going to. We didn't have that community. We didn't have my family there. Um, so I just kind of quit going to church, and Joe started to get back into her Catholic faith. Mm-hmm. And, and um, she was reading a book called Christian and Catholic. Okay. Um, which is a really interesting book. Um, tell them that little story about Amy Grant. Uh, (laughs) Well, as a theater major, um, I had an opportunity to uh, go on tour with Amy Grant and Michael W. Smith. Oh, wow. And not knowing much about what was going on with my Catholic life um, and Christian life was very difficult for me to explain to people why I was Catholic. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, found this book and started looking into the difference of understanding what my Catholic faith is all about. Wow. And and it's a book written specifically for that, to how you describe some of those unique things about the, the Catholic Church the Protestants usually have trouble with. Right, right. Um, so one day I just, people finally quit pushing me. Um, and they the said, Holy this Sp- guy is not going to yep, do it. <laughs> they gave up. And the Holy Spirit started working. Mm-hmm. And I opened that book uh, one day just to the, the, the chapter on confession. And I read through it and I went, huh, I don't have any problem with that. So I sat down that night, I read that book cover to cover. Wow. And I was shocked that nothing in this book contradicted anything that I grew up believing. Mm-hmm. So I thought about it, and I didn't do anything about it for about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And then my brother, who passed away, um, had, had had a rough time in his life, and we went down, picked him up, brought him up here to, to uh, um, kind of rebuild his life and start over. And in that process, he was going to Mass with Joe and I once in a while, and something sparked his interest, and he started looking into the Catholic Church. And I got a phone call from the RCIA coordinator at the cathedral for him saying that he had expressed interest, which shocked me. But right. I said, well, I got you on the phone. I've been thinking about this for years. <laughs> so Can I come too? <laughs> you know, and, and he and I did everything together. Every momentous occasion in our life, every milestone we did together. Mm-hmm. And I believe this is just God expecting, waiting me having me wait for him so we could make that journey together wow too. that's really cool so it was beautiful so you became catholic i became catholic and what made you decide to become a deacon because now we've got a big jump here <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're not kidding 18 years yeah <laughs> so so after i was confirmed you know i i kind of drifted because i didn't have anybody to keep me connected right you know just joanne and you know, she's my wife. I didn't want to hear it from her. Uh, let's <laughs> that's, be honest. That's normal. That's, that's normal. normal. Selective hearing. Yeah. Uh, see, so I, I wound up um, getting talked into joining the Knights of Columbus. Mm-hmm. And what I realized with the Knights of Columbus was this, this desire for service. That, you know, I grew up always willing to help out. I mm-hmm. was taught that's what we're supposed to do as Christians. Right. We're supposed to help those who need help. So... It fit right in my wheelhouse. But what it taught me was the desire to go look for those opportunities to serve. Um, and that was that was kind of the first step. Um, another big part of it is Joanne. I mean, she oh. she has a servant's heart. Um, yes, she does. I agree. You know, she she's always there to help anyone in need. And that, just like her quiet witness, you know, I, sh- I should go back. The only person that never pushed me to convert was her. She never even asked. That was important. It was important because her quiet witness of rediscovering her faith is what opened me to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And her quiet witness of having a servant's heart um, affected me as well in a way that I wasn't realizing. Right. And what it really boils down to, as cliche as it is, I had a dream. Uh Um, I was at a point, I was at a crossroads where... My faith was strong, but something just wasn't quite there. Right. Um, I didn't know what it was. And um, when the deacon over Christ the King, Deacon Borman, gave a homily about prayer, and he said, you know, we spend a lot of time talking to God, but do we ever listen? And that hit me because I realized, no, I never listen for God to respond to me. Right. So that night, actually, I went home and I said, you know, I prayed, God, tell me how to build a prayer life. And uh, that night I had a dream. I was a deacon giving a homily about how to build a prayer life. (laughs) 
So I went, okay, and I did that. And my prayer life really began to blossom. Um, but I didn't think any of the deacon part. Right. And a few weeks later, I had another dream that I was a deacon setting up the altar, and I turned and handed the host to this tall, young, blonde priest, and I just knew that was my nephew Tommy celebrating his first Mass. Oh, wow. He was about 10 at the time and, you know, had already decided he's going to be a priest. <laughs> so, and he's still on that path, by the awesome. way. Awesome. So. <laughs> so it might happen <laughs> It still. might happen. You never know. <laughs> See, so I said, well, maybe I better look into this deacon thing. Yeah. So I started researching. I started uh, reading. And the more I read, the more I realized this is me. This is who I am. Right. Um, and the more truly called I felt. And I started to understand why we describe it as a calling. Right. Um, so that's really where it started. And Joe came home. She was out working in Rapid City for a few months with her folks and came home. And I gave her about five minutes and then said, I think I'm going to be a deacon. <laughs> and she just looked at me and went, yeah, right. And walked in the other room. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. I want I want to know what she thought about that. Um, if you're just joining us, I'm talking to Deacon Thane and Joanne Barnier about their lives as a deacon and a deacon's wife. So, Joanne, when he said that to you, what were you thinking? And what did you think as it, things went along? And he actually did this. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, the first thing that went through my mind was he swore he'd never become Catholic. Right. So now he's Catholic. <laughs> um, and now he wants to become a deacon. Mm -hmm. And it was like, uh, where did this come from? Mm -hmm. And uh, how did this you know, transpire? But as I was kind of discerning myself as far as uh, what his faith was journey was and our faith journey, um, I've come to realize that Thane has been very strong in his faith. And this was definitely the next step that God's calling for him. Yeah. Um, I think it was more solidified for me when I talked to his mother about it. And I said, oh. you know, okay, you're still Baptist, Mom, <laughs> but, you know, you are you have no problem with me being Catholic. But now we're going to the next step of yeah. becoming a deacon. Yeah. And her comment that really kind of hit my heart was, if Thane wasn't going to be a Baptist minister, he would have been a Catholic deacon. Oh, that's really cool. So I knew at that point that that yeah. was God telling me this is what yeah. needs to be done. What beautiful so. acceptance on her part. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's, you know, her and my dad, they've been my biggest champions. They really yeah. have. That's great. Um, That's great. And the whole, con you know, I had an entire Baptist congregation praying for me during formation. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, it's Because that is not always the case. So that's no, awesome. No, not at all. Yeah. In fact, I was blessed this last uh, Christmas. Um, I got to go back and, and preach uh, at my old Baptist <laughs> church. Wow. And actually, they, they sold the old church. And I was the last person to ever preach in that 108 oh. year old sanctuary so uh, they had to sell it there was a there was a catholic preaching and there right. it was like oh got to sell it now that's right yeah, yeah. something like that so has um being a deacon changed your marriage joanne um i think it's very much strengthened um our relationship um in regards to our, our faith and our prayer life mm -hmm. and um i think it's been really beneficial for both of us good in, good in our marriage good um, I'm not going to let you answer that one thing. I just want to hear from Joanne. <laughs> what I want to be able to get to um, what deacons do before we get too far, because I mean, honestly, I've I am a cradle Catholic. I've seen I obviously see deacons at mass and everything. But OK, so you help at mass. You're not going to like my answer. <laughs> it's not really about what deacons do. OK, uh, that's really not the question to ask. OK. Uh, it's the natural question to ask, right. but the real question to ask is what a deacon is. Okay. Um, this was the thing that I think most guys who begin discernment quickly learn. Um, the things that deacons do is this broad, wide spectrum of various ministries that, that, that we perform in various uh, ways. What a deacon is, is the image of Christ the servant. Okay. Um, who, who came not to serve, but to be served. Or not, not to, came to serve, not, not to, to be, be served. served. Yep. Uh, we come not to be served, but to serve. Right. And we configure ourselves to that image. So a lot of what we do, it's a threefold ministry of, of charity, word, and altar. Okay. So the altar, obviously, we assist at, at Mass, distribute communion, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, word, you know, uh, if there's a deacon present, he almost always proclaims the right. gospel. Right. Um, and as heralds of the word, we're supposed to, to we preach and teach and, and, and spread the word of God. The mission of charity is our primary focus. Okay. And it, but charity takes on a whole 
broad spectrum. Um, you know, we do a lot of ministries. You see a lot of hospital ministry, prison ministries, working with the homeless, working with the poor. Uh, but those, it, it goes even broader than that. Um, you know, it's really about we're the arms of the bishop reaching out to the mm -hmm. community. Um, you know, for me, I was very much called to prison ministry. Okay. Um, but I haven't been able to really do that. And most of my ministry has happened in the parish, helping uh, build the spiritual life of the parish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with COVID, the technology things that yeah. I've been able to do for the parish with the outreach, it, that's God's used my skills um, to, to promote his kingdom in that right. way. And I've in had a time it, when people really needed it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there again, it's surrendering to God's will for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to be doing prison ministry, but that's not where I'm needed right now. And mm -hmm. that's not what God's calling me to do. So it really, it, it really does vary. Uh, you know, sacramentally, the old joke is we baptize Mary and Barry. Uh, <laughs> and that kind of sums up the liturgical pieces right. that, that, that deacons do on their own. But right. really, it's really just about being a servant for Christ, whether that's in our parish, in our community, in the prisons, the hospitals, wherever we're needed to go to bring the light of Christ out to the fringes, that, that's what a deacon is called to do. Okay. Um, what's the most memorable thing you've done so far? The most memorable thing I think actually happened during formation. Okay. Um, I was uh, at a residence encounter Christ uh, um, weekend up in the state penitentiary, and it was my first one. And the, there's a moment, there's a time where we have a little chapel service towards the end. We all we, we have our small group tables that we've been leading all weekend, and we go off together to pray about the weekend. Mm -hmm. And normally we go to a different room, but for some reason the guard that was there decided, we're not going to do that this time. You can't go to a different room. So uh, we cleaned out an old storage closet and so we could put our chapel there so have some privacy for the guys. Sure. So here I am in this closet with seven other guys crammed together, <laughs> standing next to a moldy old mop sink. And they're all looking at me to lead them in prayer. And... These guys, we start praying. These guys start opening up about the experiences they've had over the weekend. And, and you know, these guys are, they're at a point where they're desperate for anything to believe in, mm -hmm. anything to get them through. And it was one of the most raw, visceral, spirit-filled moments I've ever had in my life. Wow. And sitting there with these men on the fringes, that was the moment I realized exactly why God was calling me to be a deacon yeah. and what that really meant. Yeah, really solidified it. For Absolutely. You, huh? That's really cool. Thanks for telling us that You're story. Um, Joanne, uh, as a deacon's wife, how involved are you in him, his service as a deacon? Is there, is there ways you're involved? I've been very blessed because I'm able to be a part of everything that he's been doing mm -hmm. um, at his parish and in his ministry life. Um, but I also have the choice of not being able to be a part of that okay. as well, you know, and, and taking care of the family right. instead. Right. Um, but I think God has offered me an opportunity to do both in some fashion. Okay. So uh, my involvement with him is, you know, being part of the parish and, and part of the things that he does at the parish, whether it was during COVID. Right. Um, and we had masses were suspended and or, you know, even today when we're, we have the opportunities to be a part of whatever we can be. Right. So. Right. Um, that's really nice to know because I'm sure there's some families when, when the husband's thinking, I think I'll be a deacon and the wife's like, okay, wait, <laughs> what does that mean for me? You know, so right. you can really choose how involved you want to be. Yeah, I think a wife, um, is more of a support system. Sure. I kind of look at my life as St. Joseph and with okay. Mary and helping support that family unit, mm -hmm. you know, and in, enjoying the opportunity to see what happens within his ministry. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. I like that. And there are sacrifices that, that she's had to make. And there's sacrifices that all the wives make. Mm -hmm. they, they do sacrifice our time mm -hmm. that we give to the church, especially, you know, if, if we're working full time and then doing ministry, um, it's going to take time away. Right. And uh, and that's a sacrifice that, that the wives willingly make. Right. Right. That's great. I think uh, that's got to really build a marriage, too, to sacrifice for each other that way. Yeah, and yeah. we've been blessed, and that's the way our relationship's been really from the beginning, yeah. um, you know, with, with with one or both of us touring with various theater stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, 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 made, we knew we were going to make those sacrifices anyway, so 
that really wasn't as difficult for us, I think, as it is for some couples. Sure, sure. Um, we don't have, we only have mm, 20 seconds. Do you, can you, if, if a man came to you, Deacon Thane, and said, I'm thinking about becoming a deacon, should I? Um, what would you tell him? Pray. Okay. Uh, that, that is really the thing. Become a man of prayer. Uh, it, is a, it, it is truly a, a, an exercise in discernment. You're either called or you're not. Right. There's nothing you can do to make it happen if God isn't calling you to this. Okay. So what you have to do is pray and discern and listen. To listen to see whether God is really calling you to this. And don't be afraid to try and say, you know, a year or two years in, you know, I, this isn't what I'm called to. Right. Because the whole process, the whole formation process is all about discernment. Right. Um, and being willing and opening to listen to see if God is really calling you to this in your life. Right. That's great advice. And there, you'll always be better for the effort, the right. exercise. Right. Even if you don't do it, I think, yeah, you'll grow in your faith anyway. Absolutely. So. Thank you, both of you, for being here today. Um, it was a great conversation. I learned a lot. <laughs> and it's just good to hear your story. So Th thanks for sharing it. You bet. Thanks for having us. You bet. All right. Next week on Catholic Views, we'll be talking to Father Tyler Matson about his time so far as a priest, uh, his call to priesthood, and what he's been doing at O'Gorman High School. Um, also, uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, you can watch, if you're listening on radio, you can watch these also on YouTube now. So visit us there at SF Diocese anytime. That's it for us today. Join us again next week for more Catholic Views.